What is one rule that was implemented at your school or work that backfired horribly? My high school was trying to prevent a senior prank since the class before us had got a little out of hand. They basically told us not to have one, that they would get anyone who did anything in a lot of trouble, yada yada. So somebody has an idea, what if we do an anti-prank? The idea had floated around the halls and everyone knew what we were going to do. For an entire week, every senior was going to bring a potentially threatening item for a senior prank and do nothing with it. The week starts on that Monday, nearly the entire senior class carries a banana with them to every class. This is a school of roughly 2600 students, 650 graduating class, so there are hundreds of bananas being carried through the halls. Teachers and assistant principals freaking out. By noon, an announcement was made that all bananas needed to be eaten or thrown away, or they would be confiscated. So by that afternoon, every banana was taken away from the student. The next day got even better. Somebody has the idea that we should all bring a gallon jug of water with us to class. And to no one's surprise, again there is an announcement that they are going to start taking up the water jugs for fear of what we are going to do with them. But this time, the students got creative. People are resentful now and not wanting to give up their precious water. Students are getting creative, hiding them in backpacks, avoiding teachers in the hallways, whatever it took to keep their water jugs. But alas, most of the jugs had been confiscated. So the students start taking to social media. Tons of tweets and mentions are going out to local news stations, TMZ, Opera, Ellen, you name it, they got mentioned. All of these messages are going out along the lines of school is confiscating all water, not allowing students to drink water number high school brought 2kxx number wearying number send help. You get the picture. Before the end of the day, two different news reporters were at our school. Guess we had the last laugh after all. TL, doctor, school made silly rules to not let us have a senior prank. We anti-pranked them and their rules backfired lots of negative press over nothing malicious ever happening. That's actually an impressive prank, to be honest. It was honestly really cool to see all of the seniors come together on it. Felt like since we were in our last few months together that everyone matured a little bit, cliques became less of a things, and everyone just enjoyed each other's company for a bit before going off to college and elsewhere. Definitely a fond memory for everybody involved. In my dorm, if you did something that triggered the smoke slash fire alarm, you had to do a safety presentation for everyone on your floor. This was intended to deter pranksters from pulling the alarm. A guy on our floor was making grilled cheese in the kitchenette and burned it, which legitimately triggered the fire alarm. Afterwards, he explained, assuming that since it had been a legitimate alarm and not a prank, that he wouldn't have to do a presentation. He was, of course, wrong. So, the next Wednesday night, the entire floor assembled and we were treated to a 30 minute safety presentation on the dangers of grilled cheese sandwiches. It contained literally nothing about fire safety. It was all choking hazards and cholesterol. R.I. was furious, but the student pointed out that the write-up that he'd been given just said safety presentation. We didn't get any more presentations after that. And that's why you should never mix up a sandwich and a melt. WTF kind of dorm is this? Are we talking college? That's ridiculous. You're freaking adults not primary students. If you violated the dress code policy, you had to wear these really big grey sweet pants or sweatshirts that said 605 in big orange letters. Dress code violation. It became a thing to get caught because they were apparently really comfortable. When the admin finally caught on that people were trying to get them on purpose, they changed it so that you got in school suspension. Jokes on them for that too. Lots of kids prefer that over being in class. That sounds familiar. I think they did that at my high school as well, but I may be remembering incorrectly. Yep, having them sit in the office waiting for a parent to come get them seems to have been the local fix. Actual parental involvement changed most of the behavior. There was rule they put in place my freshman year of high school that if you arrived late that is after first bell, you couldn't park in the parking lot. You'd have to park at the gas station down the highway and walk to school, making you even more late. It stopped after 20 or so people intentionally showed up late to school and made a mass exodus along the highway. 
on top of a lot of parents moaning. I don't get the logic of rules like this. Oh, you're late to class? Well, let's make you jump through hoops to make you even more late as punishment. All this does is that when people are late, they'll just leave instead of dealing with that. One kid stands up 3 seconds before the bell rings sit down. The bell doesn't dismiss you, I do. You will all wait until I say you can go. If the bell doesn't tell us when we should leave, why does it tell you when we are late? My school band all balls over a couple of inches in diameter because someone kicked a football through a window during lunch. Most of us that walked home walked past the woods by the golf course and had a ready supply of golf balls as a result. Golf balls were allowed under the new rules due to their size. Three broken windows in one lunch period later they weren't. There was a sign in the boys bathroom asking not to bounce balls on walls. You can bet that wall got humped a lot. I played baseball growing up. There was a sign in some cities. Dugout that said, do not beat off cleats in dugout. Naturally, cleats were scratched off by some players. New manager got rid of the sofa in the break room so people couldn't nap on their hour long lunch break. No one overslept or took the piss, but it was good to have the option on a tough day. Stoner guy started sleeping in other places, including in between walls and in the warehouse. That's when we started losing him and couldn't find him as he'd go into a deeper sleep and was less likely to be disturbed. He didn't lose his job somehow, that place had a hard time hiring. That's because they got rid of the sofa. Yeah you really need that casting couch to hire people. They made a new rule where we had to ask permission to use the restroom during lunch. We all coordinated and the whole cafeteria would raise their hands at once to request to go. They responded by sending us two at a time. We did this for a few days then changed our procedure to everyone just getting up at once and going to the restroom without permission. They didn't ever officially do away with the rule, but the teachers on duty in the lunchroom eventually just stopped enforcing it. WTF. What kinds of school do you have? Prison. I used to work for a production company that employed a lot of really skilled, award-winning editors. There were producers and executives and directors, but the real money makers, the people who really made the company were the editors, so the company was basically centered around them. The executives would always order in food for the editors, and the editors would usually eat in their offices while doing their thing. One day the executives decided to cut paid lunches to save money. The editors all thought this was a peen move, so they'd go out for lunch and sometimes stay out for like 3 hours. There was nothing the company could do, really, because these editors were top of their game, and if Warner Brothers heard that the editor they always used had left, they might leave too. So the company couldn't do anything. They saved maybe $15 per person per day, but lost like 4 hours per person per day. When trimming a budget, you want to remove things that are the most expensive and provide the least noticeable benefit. So, of course, the first thing to always go is creature comforts, which cost almost nothing and have immense impact on quality of life. I'm perpetually amazed many companies exist. You're assuming they want to remove the things that make sense to remove. What actually happens is they remove the easiest things to remove. That is low effort, low capital, low time investment. What's the easiest thing a manager could possible do to save money? Simply stop buying lunch for people. Takes one email, manager can claim $50,000 annual savings on day one to their bosses. This is why layoffs that end up hurting the company financially occur. Labor is the easiest go to when you have to cut costs quickly. Companies are starting to realize this in manufacturing, at least, and have been focusing on decreasing specific cost rather than fixed. Depends on your industry though, some have very low. Fixed slash labor costs, 5, 10%, while others can be higher than 50%. In the 5-10% cases, it might actually save your company money to go hire more people, but many people are very reluctant to do so. Little backstory, my high school was a teeny tiny rural school, 600 kids in grade 7, 12. Randomly at the beginning of second semester my senior year, the new principal, who had just moved here from an inner city school in another state, decided that we would no longer be allowed to carry backpacks slash book bags in the halls between classes for safety reasons. 
makes sense in this day and age, but the students were mad about this abrupt change in clockwork of our tiny school. Shenanigans ensued after this new rule came into effect, including every student dropping their books in the hall simultaneously at 10.50 one day. My personal favorite was the guy in my class who decided he would make something that couldn't be called a backpack. First he took a bunch of belts and tied his books together so they could he carried on his back. That was shut down after day 2. That's when it got hilarious the next Monday he comes waltzing in wearing a product of his own design. He had made L-shaped shelves from pieces of wood that could be connected to the sides of his legs and proceeded to harness his books to these leg brace shelves. Needless to say, he was pulled from class before lunch. My high school had a really bad problem with students showing up to class 5 minutes late every day, so they tried 3 different solutions. First they stopped letting us use lockers. They quickly found out that just meant that nobody brought their books to class. Next they decided to ban use of the restrooms between class periods. Teacher started complaining about everyone asking for a bathroom pass as soon as class started, so that was abandoned after a week or so. Lastly one week they made a ton of announcements Monday Wednesday that all students were to be on time for class. Then on Thursday they suspended any student who was late for insubordination. Turns out that included half the football team. This occurred right before the biggest game of the year. In a town of 4000 people this game attracts roughly 16,000. So yeah they gave that up as well. 5 minuets late every day? You would think that would logically mean increased passing time. My 4 years of high school were full of my school trying out new policies and procedures to use in the future. My sophomore year, my school decided to make tests count for 100% of the grade and homework count for 0%, but it was still assigned. And as you'd expect, kids did absolutely no homework. The ones that didn't retain information well or were bad test takers struggled pretty hard to make the grade without homework padding it. Our failure rate was pretty high that year, then my junior year, they brought homework grades back and made a new rule that there were no due dates nor penalties for turning in late work for your 6 weeks, we didn't do quarters. As long as it was before the next 6 weeks started, you were good. This led to students doing no homework until the last few days of the 6 weeks and teachers had to accept and grade them all before grades were due. This put teachers under immense stress by causing them to work insane hours and spend every hour at home grading, which made them very irritable and more likely to just shove pointless activities and busy work at us until they could finish grading. In the UK, literally everything rests on end of course exams and maybe a piece of course work. The stress is unbelievable and so many people don't get as good grades as they could do because they don't learn that way. In my first week of exams, 16 year main exams pretty much, I literally developed a twitch in my eye because of stress, until I just stopped giving a crap and cruised it. I'm so lucky I did well, but I probably dropped a grade in one or two things. We had like, 11 subjects I think. Funnily enough the test is everything model is where I do best. The final test was 80% of the final grade, so I could do nothing but the test and still pull down a solid C or B end result is I did maybe a quarter of the homework in most classes, to give me cushion for that B, 